So BT corn, the BT portion, <clears throat> stands for Bacillus thuringiensis. This is a, this is a soil bacterium that produces a toxin that when insects eat this toxin, it crystallizes in their gut and they die. So BT corn has taken the gene from this organism, from this bacteria that produces this protein that causes harm to the insects. And that particular gene has been inserted into the genome, into the genome of whatever crop. So for example, BT corn, it would be inserted into the corn genome. Therefore, the actual corn plant is producing this protein that when it, these particular insects feed on this corn, they're going to be consuming this protein and therefore it causes them to die. So that's just one example of GMO foods. Um, but the point is that a gene from another organism has been inserted into the genome so that they're producing a particular protein or some other modifications been made to their genome. Now let's talk about something called gel electrophoresis. Okay, this is a, a picture of um, the end result of a gel electrophoresis. And all of the bands that you see there that are sort of very light or fluorescent are, are bands of DNA. Now, DNA is not visible to the naked eye, right? But they've used a stain so that you can, so that you can visualize that. The particular stain they used in this is called Ethidium bromide, okay? And it, it sort of calls intercalates, but it sticks to the DNA and then it's visible under black light. So that's what you're seeing in those, what makes the bands light up. Now, how does gel electrophoresis work? Well, it separates DNA by size, okay? And this gel is a porous substance. So it's a little bit thicker, okay, than like jello, but it has a similar consistency. So it has pores or tiny openings throughout it, right? And if you think about it, if, if you're leaving a very crowded event, like a concert or church or something like that, everybody's trying to get out at the same time, and there's people everywhere, okay? One small person, right, can snake their way through the openings a lot faster than, let's say, two, three people holding hands trying to snake through at the same time. It's same with DNA. Smaller pieces are able to work their way through, right, and down the gel faster than larger pieces. They, have, they get hung up, and so it takes them longer, and they're not able to travel as fast. Now, the way this works... This gel is set up so that an electric current is flowing through the gel. And there are two different electrodes, the negative electrode and the positive electrode. And because the backbone of DNA, the sugar phosphate backbone, the phosphate itself carries a negative charge, then opposites attract. So the DNA is going to be attracted to the positive electrode, so it's, the movement is going to be this direction. And based on size, the smaller pieces move faster than the larger pieces. So for example, this piece here, right, is smaller than this piece, okay? What's, what's loaded on both ends of the gel? This is a DNA ladder, meaning this is made up of pieces of DNA of known sequence, okay, known size, so that you can compare your, let's say all of these are your test samples, right? You can compare the size of those bands against the size of these in the ladder so that you have an idea of the size of your bands in your sequence. Okay. Lastly, we're going to finish up with the first cloned mammal. Okay. And the first cloned mammal was Dolly. She was a sheep. And we're just going to go through the process of how this occurred. So, this type of cloning means you're taking a cell from an adult, okay? So in this case, this was our donor, okay? We were taking the cell from this adult sheep, and the cell happened to be a cell from mammary tissue, okay? Which is why the sheep was named Dolly, because Dolly Parton is known for a particular thing, and so it came from these types of cells. All right, this is a differentiated cell, right? This is not a stem cell. This is just a normal mammary cell. 
and the nucleus was taken from this mammary cell. In other words, this is the genetic material, right? This is the instructions. So the nucleus was taken from this mammary cell. Now, over here on the other side, where it says cytoplasmic donor, this is essentially like an egg donor. However, they remove the nucleus from the egg. So it's like an empty egg with no nucleus. And what they've done is they've taken the nucleus from the donor cell and they've put the nucleus into the egg with no nucleus. So now we have the cell that the genetic material is coming from this donor. Okay. Now, in the, this was grown up in the lab to a certain stage, okay, to the blastocyst stage. So we have multiple, multiple cells at this point. And then it was implanted into a, a, a third sheep, okay? This sheep is just serving as the surrogate. In other words, the uterus of this sheep is just used to implant this embryo in. Okay, and then Dolly was born. And so they had to do genetic testing to verify whether or not Dolly matched the DNA from this donor, from this donor, or from the nucleus donor. And in fact... Dolly did match this, and therefore she was a clone from that particular sheep. 